Tractate Bava Batra, page 169. Today, a little bit introduction in order to ease the daf. It's one of those dapim that we need to have some tools, some foundations, which help us um, to get over the daf relatively easy. There are certain documentations approved by the rabbinic court that we have to know the words is in Aramaic, but we're going to give also the translation of those words. And it's basically the power legal system in the rabbinic court. Um, and um, the core of that, as we discussed in the past several days, is the issue of forgery. Unfortunately, it's not just in our days um, that people try to fool or circumvent the court or do all kinds of things that is illegal, but in those days as well. And we try to cut those corners and try to eliminate um, and to reduce the, the risk, how do you say it, risk management in our very best. So the fear is sometimes people use the same documentation to double charge or um, uh, like recently it was a case not far from here of an attorney that double uh, charge people for the same charges. Um, so the fear is that people use certain a dual documentation and abuse the people who cannot stand for themselves. We try to eliminate that. So this definition is based on a book called Netivot HaMishpat, but um, um, here is the just several basic definitions. Um, first one is called in Aramaic, Ivrit, Shtar Tirfa. The second one is called Shtar Adarcha. And the third one is called Shtar Shuma. So let's use name. Reuven. Reuven gave a loan, let's say $50,000, to Shimon. Now Reuven, the lender, wants to go after Shimon to collect the money he owes him and he didn't pay it. He go before Shimon and he said, give me what you owe me. Shimon said, I use the money, I don't have the money, I pay customers, I run the business, I don't have the money to pay you. Reuven takes the document that was written, and in that document written that Shimon borrowed from him a hundred thousand, and he go before the Bet Din, before the three judges of the rabbinic court. And he said, this is amount of money that Shimon owe me. The assumption that, let's say, Shimon did not show up in court. Um, in that case, Bedin, the rabbinic court, put a cherem, put a ban or excommunication against Shimon, and then they basically tear this document, this original a uh, promissory note that um, uh, committed Shimon to pay 100k to Reuven, and produce a new one, it's called Shtar Tirfa. With that meaning, now we give you the authority as the Bet Din to go after Shimon what he owes you. Now he goes after any estate that Shimon have that is free, free of lien, try to collect it, or a state that they have lien from the past. Now, the moment he finds a state that Shimon has, or uh, he finds something that um, a state that uh, with a lien, without lien, he come back to the court and he said to them, here is the estate that I found. The bed dean again, take that new document that they produce, as we remember, we call it Shtar Tirfa, and now again, they turn the document and they produce a new one, they call Shtar Adar Cheta, which means now we, meaning the Rabbini court, give you, Reuven, the right to access the estate of Shimon, regardless if it's a lean or unlean property, using this new document we produce based on the Shtar Tirfa to go and collect it. After he collected it, then they write a new document, meaning now they take it from him, the second document, they tear it again, so actually they tear the document third time, right? And they write a new one, it's called Shtar Shuma, meaning 
the Bet Din take the new estate and they make a the appraisal. So let's say if the estate's worth 500,000 and Shimon or Ruven 100,000, the Bet Din takes the appraisal, take that, that, that new document since the third of the other star, the previous um, an, a, a document, the third, they take the new one, Shtar Shuma, they write the evaluation of the estate and the amount that he owe him. And basically, by doing this exchange, he gets, Reuven gets back the money that Shimon owe him, which is the 100k. That's the way Rashbam explained to us, based on the Gemara we study in Bavakama, page 112b. It's important to note that there are some commentaries that say that it's just switched the other way around, which is Adarhta precede the Tirfa. But regardless, the later on times allow, we go to the Rambam. Rambam Ilchot Milve Velove, chapter 22. But that's the rabbinic enactment to make sure that there is an order. And part of that is the, the statement the Prisha said in Choshen Mishpat 114 that um, we, the rabbinic court, took this document, turned the previous document, and produced a new one. So again, the purpose of all of this documentation is to make sure that there's no forgery, to make sure that there's order properly, etc., etc. Later, we're going to visit the situation, listen carefully, guess what Shimon did? Shimon and Reuven, let's say, if they are brothers, and the late father left a will, guess what Shimon did? He clandestinely hid the will, and he took a suitcase of valuable from the late father, and he not only he took it, but he sold some of the item from that suitcase. Guess what? Reuven can go back to the Bet Din, that's based on our study today, and said to the Bet Din, I am one of the heirs, I am the inheritors, right? I deserve, by the way that the late father portrayed in his will, to have me part, half or whatever it is, of the will. Since clandestinely, surreptitiously, he sold it, that's not valid sale. Guess what the Gemara tells us? Bet Din has the authority. Does everyone hear that? Bet Din has the authority to do what? Let me ask you this. What the Bet Din authority? Can someone tell me? What the Bet Din can do now? What do you think? I'm asking a question. What do you think Bet Din can do now? Bet Din can go now after Shimon and ask him to give them the name of the people or institution that he sold some of the estate. And the bed didn't call upon them and said, sorry, that sale is invalid. Guess what you have to do now? You have to return the sale, return the money, right? And we go back to scratch one to deal with the valuable items that was stolen which means the whole validity of the cell, if it was made in an illegal manner, it's not going to fly by the rabbinic court. By the way, that's a huge difference between rabbinic court and a secular court. So let's start, as we said, in page 168b, six lines from the bottom of the page. Tanu Rabbanan, the rabbi teaches us, Harei Sheba ve'amar avad shtar chovi. Someone come before the Bet Din, and he said, I can't find my promissory note. I don't know where is it. I lost it. Even if the witnesses come before the court and says, "We are the people who basically wrote this promissory note, signed it, and gave it to him," and could vim lo et ashtar, the bet din do not write a new one. You know why? Because unfortunately, people forge these type of things. They use double, they use all kind of duplications and recollect it second time. And since we want to avoid all kind of things, because think about it, he can go to the original witnesses. He doesn't tell them that he already collected it. The witnesses come before the bed and says, "Yeah, we sent that promissory note." And by doing so, he basically have the opportunity to cheat at everyone and recollected money. 
which he shouldn't. So that's the reason why the Beddin do not write a new promissory note for him to avoid this type of tricks. That's based on the Tivot HaMishpat explained to us. <coughs> what exactly are we speaking here about? Here we talk about deeds of buying and selling land. So the rabbinic court may write a replacement document excluding standard guarantees no, 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 I'm sorry. In case of documents, uh, dealing with translation to English, the, the, the documents of detailing, detailing loans, but the contracts that involve with sell and buying estate, meaning a person comes before the Bethlehem and he says, I lost the promissory note that it's written that Mr. A purchased estate from Mr. B, and he asked to write a new document, Kodvin Chutz Min Ha'acharayutshebo. So the, the, the Bet Din write a replacement document excluding the standard guarantee that was in the front of the document. Uh, again, the whole idea is that if the field is repossessed, the seller will compensate the purchaser for his loss. 169, Raman Shimon Gamliel Omer. Said the rabbinic court may not write a replacement document even for deeds of buying and selling land. Here is the Rashbam. He said the svirale otiot niknot bim sira kedel kaman gabei matana dechayshin and dilma lachar shechadvu venatnu lo shtar mechira. We are concerned that after they make all this bill of sale. So he basically, the, 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 the seller gave the gift of the land to another, and the recipient returned the deeds to him. His gift of land returns to him as well. He hold, Rashbag hold. If someone gives a gift to his fellow, you return the gift, <coughs> the document that approved the gift to the recipient, Chazra Matnato, he returned it to the giver. So Rashbam explained that by giving that, that star, that note, he basically gave him Maknelo's Huyot, he transferred the rights to him. Tosfot in uh, 168b, challenge that. Uh, it says the whole idea of the, the note is uh, basically conditional, but be as it may, we go by the Chachamim, the Chachamurim, but Nato Kayemet. The sages hold that his gift of land remains in his possession of the recipient. So Alaha, we pass and we rules like the Chachamim, that Otiyot lo niknot bim sira. The letters were not um, transferred ownership, which means when you have the star, when you have the document, the note, doesn't have by itself its value. Only mechamata otiyotshebo, because of what is written on that document. So therefore, you need to have, which call called ma'asekin yan, and therefore, if you have ma'asekin yan, then you have the halot, you have the final stage of transferring the ownership. To remind me what my grand-grandfather Rabbi Elimelech Weisblum of Lijensk said that only the Sefer Torah, the, the Torah scroll, has the special kedusha of the sacredness of the parchment even without the letter because the intent is to write the letter and there are those letters that we don't have the opportunity to read so by, by having this parchment is already contained its own kedusha. but other than that the whole idea of Chachamim hold the otiot lo konot bim sira, so you need to have ma'asek inyan. Amar mar, chutz ma'achayut shebo ma'itama. So he said, this is a clearly guarantee that was in the first document. Amar af safra lefi she'en kodvim shnei ishtarot al sadeh achat. You don't write two documentation of sale that guarantee in one estate. Why? Dil ma'azil ba'al chov, tarif la lehai, ve'azil hai umapik chad ve'tarif lekochot. ואמר לבעל חוב, אמר לי לבעל חוב, שוף לי דאקום בה, ועדרת תרפן ומפיק אחרינה. 
והדר הזיל תריף לכוחות החרינאי. So we have here in a way three entities. We have number one, the seller, מוכר. Number two, the purchaser, לוקח. And number three is the בעל חוב, someone that he owe money. Sell all money. So now the concern is that number two, the purchaser said, I lost this document. So since he lost this document, the seller can go after the other party. He have his tarachayut, and therefore he will take from the second one. The whole idea, the, the Rashbam explained that the first document, um, um, he claimed that he lost. So the moment he lost this document, the fear is that after a certain period of time when there is a thought that it's already forgotten, he pulled back the original. So we try to avoid those corners and people, uh, you know, abuse the system. So since you basically tear apart the note of the seller's creditor, what's the document could uh, the creditor repossess the purchaser land again? We shall know just uh, as a general note how they did it in the time of Chazal. In the time of Chazal, as we said, when Reuven gave a loan to Shimon, just using a number, 100K, so when Shimon have no means to pay Reuven, Reuven takes that promissory note to court, and with that promissory note, they are able to let him possess toward those whom he owns. So that's the whole idea, soon you see how they do it. V'chitem ad lo kra'ana v'amar Rav Nachman kol tirfa d'lochtiv b'kra'ana l'shtar demalve l'atif tirfa'u. So that's the whole idea if we explained earlier, the tirfa, radachta v'shuma. Adachad l'lochtiv b'kra'ana l'tirfa, l'tirfa l'av adachta'u. That's what we call in Hebrew otsa'a l'apol, the people who goes and repossess. V'chol shuma d'lochtiv b'kra'ana l'adachta l'av shumai. Which means <laughs> that um, the whole claim is the one person came and says, This estate belongs to my father. And since it belongs to my father, if someone else took this estate and sell it without my consent, the sale is illegal, is not valid. The moment the sale is not valid, therefore, the heir, the son that entitled for that estate can legally have it back and even in a way there are two documentation here that it's written guarantee in a way it can go to the, the situation that can be recollected twice and there's a Prisha in Choshen Mishpat 114 as well as the Rambam that try to deal how you avoiding such a situation but here we try to explain how this surreptitious uh, clandestine deal happened. So it said So the whole fear is that you, you, it's endless with the, the fight and the war here. But again, the whole idea is that people behave in such a low life and low matter that sometimes there is no other ch choice but to avoid this type of um, behavior. So he should write the um, a proper bill of sale that um, one that includes a guarantee for this purchaser and then let the court write a receipt to the seller stating all documents that are issue with regard to the purchase of this field are not valid except for the one issue on this date so amarua rabanan kamed rav papa vamo la kamed rav ashi zot omeret ein kodvin shovar so it mean that they, they, um, they, that in general the rabbinic court uh, does not write a receipt in such a cases, and in a way the purchaser lost. So the Rashbam said you can't. Um, in a way you can say that that the the lender, if he lost the document, he basically lost. Uh, according to Rabbi Yossi, you do write um, a receipt to the to him. Page 169b, so the Gemara rejected that view and they said, Amarlu be'alma kodvim shovar, 
Rav Papa or Rav Asha said, usually when the, ba- the borrower paid part of the debt, or if you know clearly that the, the lender lost the note, so therefore you write a receipt, so again, this is the whole, the whole problem that, um, this, uh, the, 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 that you don't have the, the receipt not held because it's not purchaser who bought property from the seller and the possession of the seller himself. So the purchaser was the one who will suffer from the double collection have no protection, and they will, in fact, not even be aware that they are a victim of double collection. Sof sof lakachot lav amarei de'ar ahadari. Eventually, ultimately, you said, don't the purchaser go back to the owner, which is the seller uh, of the land, to demand reimbursement. It says, meanwhile, he enjoyed the profit produce of, by the land, which unfortunately, certain people behave in that way. So, you can say another option, that you're dealing here with a one who purchased the land without a guarantee. So it's a promissory note as well. That one who wants the land, owns land, will not be appeased with money in such cases. So the purchaser will therefore allow his land to be repossessed and will seek reimbursement in a later time. Amar Mar, chutz min achayut shebo, heichik advinan. What exactly the way that we excluding the guarantee? Amar Rav Nachman dechad beachay. That's the way the best din should write. Sfalo shtaran dinan lom limik babei lom mishabde lom ibnei chari, which means that the the our deed is not intended to enable the collection of reimbursement in event of repossession, neither collection from lien property that has been sold. No collection found unsold property. Rather that it is intended merely to ensure that the land is established in the possession of the purchaser. So, so he said to him, Amarafram, so to the Hayuta So he wrote that there is a no guarantee. So that's in a deed. Otherwise, he collects if you don't try it this way. So, Ravashi, Ravashi disagrees. He said, The guarantee is not a scribal error. We assume, we assume that it was a Dad Balashtar, the one who owns that da- document in his knowledge that he basically let go, he let go the, the guarantee. So therefore you cannot collect a lien property with that. Because it doesn't written a guarantee in that. Here is a story that relates to that. How it is a lady that she gave money. The Avel Ezuzel gave money to a certain man. She asked him to take this money, take $500,000, go and buy for me a state. He went there and he bought her a purchase in a way that it was without guarantee. So without guarantee, according to Rav Nachman, so he says, Anyway, Rav Nachman said, He said, excuse me, I sent you to what? It's a famous statement. Uh, to act for my benefit, not for my determine. So therefore the entire agency is null and void and thereby neg- uh, negating the purchase. Nevertheless, you agreed to purchase the land without a guarantee. So you go and sell it with, uh, uh, to this woman, uh, 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 to, uh, purchase the land with, uh, from him without a guarantee and then sell it to the woman with the guarantee, so you will reimburse her in the event the land is repossessed. There is a uh, very interesting comment I read based on that in the Bereshit Mem Zayn, Parsha Vayechi. They said, the Torah said, Vayikin Yosef et kol admat Mitzrayim lefaro why the purpose the Torah said ki machru ish sadeu? So my brother-in-law in his book Daf al Daf 
explained beautifully that maybe you said that it's not valid this sale because of Ana'a, because they sell the estate for bread. For sure, they don't re reach the, the real value. So he said that's the whole idea that Takuni Shtaratich Be'ol Le'avutei. And therefore the Torah said, Vati Aretz Leparo. So you don't have the Ana'a. He brought the Chovat Arbavot in Shara Kniya, who said that the person, when he reached the world to come, they show him a lot of mitzvot. And he said, I never did this mitzvot. So they said, Misha Siper Bignutcha, anyone who badmouth you, you gain their mitzvot. So he bring based this based on that, this Gmaral, Takunish Tartich Vero Lavute, he sent you only to perform mitzvot and perform mitzvot properly. Um, otherwise, it can go the other way around. Rabban Shimon Gamliel Omer, Nutan Matana Lechavro, Echzir Lo Et Ashtar Chazra Matanto, Vachamur Matanto Kaimet. No time? Okay, we'll do it quickly. Ma'it Amad Rabban Shimon Gamliel Amar Rav Asi, Naasek Omer Lo Sadezo, Nutan Lecha Kol Zman Shashtar Biyadecha. Matkif La Rabba Yachen Ignav O Avad Nami, El Amar Rabba Botiot Nignot Bim Sira Kamiflige. Rabban Shimon Gamliel Savar Otiot Nignot Bim Sira. He said that they that acquired transferring the document. The sages hold that the letters are not acquired by transferring the document. So obviously we need more time to discuss what exactly the difference between the Rabban Shem Gamliel and uh, the Chachamim, but Mitzvah Shem will do it the next half.